The Range Rover, the full-size Range Rover is 55 years young this year. It's gonna be a big year for a big luxury car because this one on my left is the first all-electric Range Rover there has ever been. It uses the same platform hardware as a regular car. It's gonna be priced like a top of the range V8 petrol option, but it doesn't replace any of the internally combusted models. It's an all new kind of Range Rover um, that can do anything that any other sort of Range Rover can do. And we've come here to the Herefordshire forests, to Eastner Castle, which is Land Rover's experience center, to find out exactly how much Range Rover capability there is in this new car. Okay, you join me in an all-electric Range Rover. I have to say, it's all very quiet and incredibly, agreeably easy to get on with this car. I've done one loop of this little mixed off-road circuit already, so this is my second loop. So I've had a little bit of a taste of this car already, so I know what's coming. But even so, wow, you can't really believe the difference that it makes to not have a combustion engine whirring away in front of you all the time. It's just, it's just no noise. It's just, the noisiest thing in this car is the air conditioning. And given what it can do, well, you're about to find out what it can do. Just get a taste of it anyway. It's an extraordinary thing. So this car, as we've said before, based on the same platform architecture as the regular Range Rover, which has been with us for, I think, three or four years now. It uses two electric motors, identical permanent magnet electric motors. Each one has an axle to itself. Um, there's a sort of a transmission for each one. There's a 118 kilowatt hour nickel metal, little nickel manganese cobalt battery in between. Um, so they're aiming for a lab test range of about 300 miles. They've got peak power of about, I think, 550 PS, 5542 five, of His Majesty's horsepower um, and a little over 650 pounds foot of torque. So really the performance level is absolutely in line with what a V8 Range Rover will give you. The torque level is beyond that. And consider that it's accessible torque. It is torque that is right there under the pedal, the instant that you tip into the pedal, without needing to put revs on, an en on a combustion engine, or summon up a kind of a run at a hill. Or... And that's a transformative difference. When it comes to off-road capability, the ease with which this car will just deal with what's in front of it you know, climb, hop over obstacles, and vector talk to find that little bit of grip that it needs. It's, it's unlike, well, it's unlike any Range Rover there's been before or any other off-roader I think I know. So we're on a bit of mud and gravel, a bit of a muddy track. It's fairly dry. Um, and we're on a regular M&S Pirelli Scorpion tire. You can get proper AT tyres on your Range Rover Electric if you want them. I dare say there's probably a more road orientated tyre you can have as well, but this is the sort of middle ground one. It's the one you might have, I guess. It's one most, most Range Rover owners would have. And we're not asking anything extraordinary of it on these tracks, but it's just, it's just finding grip in a really matter of fact way. And you don't really have to think about where that grip might be. You don't have to sort of worry about managing the car's momentum. How fast are you going into this little gully? You know, how much throttle am I applying? Is it too much? Am I going to come out of this little gulch too quickly? Am I going to bog down and get stuck in this next bit? None of that figures because you've just got such fine controllability of this car's motors and what its wheels are doing and how much momentum it's got, all of that stuff is absolutely at the heart and soul of what you need to do to drive effectively off-road. And they've driven this thing everywhere. It's been to the desert and the sand dunes of Dubai. It's been to um, the, you know, the ice of, of, of 
uh, the Arctic Circle a couple of times, you know, and it's done everything. And, and here at Eastner, it's, it's, it's spent a lot of time on a lot of tricky surfaces being tuned to do everything that a Range Rover ought to be able to do. Um, but it's the, it's just the ease with which it'll do it that makes the difference, I think. So there are a couple of little compromises to the on paper capability that this car has. If you're a keen eyed follower of these things, you'll notice that because of the under four battery, the way that's packaging, um, there's a little bit less ground clearance with this car than there is in another Range Rover. And it's the difference between, you know, 260 and 290 millimeters. So it's still got a lot of ground clearance, right? Still got your air suspension, lifts it up above when it needs to. There's a little bit less break over angle. So when this car is going over obstacles and crests, it's likely to contact the ground sooner than a regular, slightly sooner than a regular Range Rover would. But you know, we're driving through some ruts. We've been doing that for the last five minutes. It hasn't hit the ground yet. Um, and when it does, it's designed to be able to take a bit of a, a, a little bit of a, a little bit of a whack. Even though the battery is where it is under the floor, it's packaged in such a way but they expect it to take the odd little, little whack and just carry on going about life without worrying too much about it. So, you know, Land Rover has key tests of cars like this. Ah, right on cue. That's a li one little such impact that this car can just brush off. There you go. The battery is where it is. Is it vulnerable? Not really. I don't think you'd worry about it because, you know, they've done all those tests. They've They've driven this car into deep water and left it there and then driven it out again. And they've, they know that it can scale 45 degree inclines because that's the, that's the standard test that they have. And they know that you can drive up a 35 degree slope, slope and stop and then carry on. It just is engineered for dual purpose use in a way that most 4x4s aren't. And let's remember, this is a luxury car. So it does all the luxury stuff too. And we haven't driven it on the road today, but my guess is it'll ride like a Range Rover. Um, and it is beautifully quiet. I mean, you can sit here and just hear the water sloshing around the wheels and the blower just whirring away gently. And that's it. And I haven't, you know, I, I haven't actually been into the throttle more than about 30% at all yet. And we've been up 20 degree slopes and, um, I think that's the biggest difference. It's how easy it is to drive off road. You don't, you don't, you really don't have to sort of put in more torque than you expect to, just in case you begin to run out of momentum halfway up a climb, because you've got that level of control over, over exactly what this car is doing. And they say the net upshot is you end up just more acquainted with the outer limits of what this car's tires can do. So, off-road capability is always a compromise. You know, you're always at the limit of what of what ultimately the tyres you put on the car are capable of. But you don't have to sort of overcompensate with the drive line of this car. You don't have to sort of build up a level of momentum and worry that you might bog down, or stall halfway up and try again. You just know. You have a much clearer idea of what the tyre can do, what kind of obstacle you can go up, where you are, how easy it is. It's a remarkable thing. And then there's this, we're climbing up, oh, we're about 16, going up to maybe something close to 20 degrees. And I'd say I'm probably at about 20% throttle now. I haven't had to prepare for climbing up this slope in any way at all, because I'm talking to you, right? I've just materialized at a rather difficult would seem to be a rather difficult point at the Eastner off-road centre, but the car's just picking its way up. It's a bit like a sort of a, a kind of a Himalayan mountain goat herd that's just, mm. it just knows what it's got to do to get itself, you know, it's carrying every single possession you own and it's just going up the side of a mountain in a very, very roundabout way. That was a bit of a poke the throttle then, but I didn't go past 25%. And if I was driving up this and anything else, anything with an engine, I'd be overworking the engine, probably overworking the tires, just to get that bit of momentum I needed 
to get up the worst of it and then wear in the consequences, wouldn't I? It would be so much less effortless than this. So there's all the refinement stuff, the comfort stuff we talked about. There's that drivability factor off-road. When you come to drive your Range Rover and really explore what it can do, there's that extra layer of how nonchalantly it will do it. And then there's freedom from compromise everywhere else as well. So, you know, you can get this as a regular wheelbase car. You'll be able to get it as a long wheelbase car. You know, it doesn't come at the expense of any of the combustion engine models. You still want a V8 or a, or a FEV. You can have it. This isn't Range Rover saying, we want you to buy an electric car now. This is all about giving people the option. Now we're going to descend a bit. So this is what, this is the bit that Land Rover calls Gearbox Hill, right? So you have to come down very carefully. The track's going to sweep round to the left. I'm just going to lower the speed of the hill descent control, and then I'm going to take my seat off. And it's just going to nudge around and drive itself down 17, 19, 20, 22. Yeah, quite a steep hill. Two point, oh, 27 degrees, 26 degrees. A lot of Range Rover coming down quite a steep and slippery hill like it ain't a thing. I'm not sure, really, how much more you could expect of a car like this. I don't know how much easier it could make your life. I don't know how much more you could expect it to do. I'm fairly sure. There's never been a luxury car that did quite as much or had quite a broad breadth of capability as Range Rover, right? That's been its USP for 55 years. Well, just got even broader, didn't it? I mean, this car comes along and feels like, somehow, it feels like more Range Rover. But unlike any other Range Rover there's ever been. So, we'll drive it again later. We'll get proper on-road impressions, all of that stuff. Um, there'll be road tests and group tests, and it's all rather promising. So, we'll leave it there. Thank you very much for watching, and remember to like and subscribe, and I'll see you again on the channel very soon.